Hello, Indre. You spoke at the World Aviation Training Symposium this year. Could you introduce it and tell us why it is important to the aviation world? World Aviation Training Symposium, as usual, was uh, in Florida and that's a perfect place to meet, um, I could say, most of the aviation training organizations and uh, training device suppliers and that's uh, the perfect place to, uh, to meet uh, all of them in one place. Could you present your report topic shortly that you delivered at the conference? I was speaking about human resources in aviation business and uh, before my presentation uh, we did a great job uh, looking around the uh, different training organizations, how they solve uh, candidate selection process and uh, solve how they solve a candidate selection um, problems and uh, I was talking about competences, so what, are, what are the most important and uh, how to assess them. What were the main themes you presented? There's no surprise about uh, human resource impact on flight safety and I raised few questions to the auditorium. Uh, uh, what do these professionals think about a candidate assessment uh, before the flight, uh, flight uh, training and uh, they couldn't tell me what are the requirements in official documents uh, despite of age, uh, some kind of scores from the secondary school, mathematics, uh, physics, uh, English knowledge, but no one can be very sure about competences uh, and um, I shared my knowledge and experience and uh, uh, information from the, uh, our company research, how we can assess uh, these competences before the students become a professional pilot. And uh, there are no regulations about uh, candidate assessment or uh, competences uh, that should be assessed before uh, studies. Uh, so it depends on the training organization point of view. If you want, you can do that but you can take all of these guys who are just have desire, good health and they can be pilot. Uh, so th there were discussion, is there a need to assess or we can go as we are going before. Indra, could you tell me what were the areas that gathered most interest from the auditorium? Half of auditorium was like uh, agreeing and uh, sharing the uh, experience or just saying okay we know tools or, or tests uh, or we use some kind of um, methods and the other part were disagreeing that uh, they can do the assessments uh, in um, or they have a question can they do an assessment because of uh, professional associations uh, they say maybe they don't have law to do that is there a question uh, can we assess or not if, if, if it's about uh, flight safety and what are other training centers uh, practice on the issue presented it depends of the region of the culture and uh, we if you look to general business um, most of uh, biggest uh, training organizations uh, they use various kind of tests, uh, uh, constructive interviews, or other methods that uh, help companies just to to leave the risk behind. But uh, everybody knows, and um, and people are talking about that. There are a lot of possibilities to to enter flight training organizations without that. Indra, does United States practice differ from European Union practice? Of course, and uh, there were um, some kind of discussion. Are these topics for us, for United States, or maybe just for a European Union? What does it mean to you to practice and not even to practice, but to speak at the uh, conferences like uh, World Aviation Training Symposium? There is a huge difference to be uh, as a member like uh, to hear some new ideas, to share with the members, but uh, the different uh, feeling is to, 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 to stand in front and share your point of view with others. And uh, of course, after 
after the speeches uh, and of course looking to my age and experience and sometimes it seems that what what this young lady is talking about or what she is doing in our professional uh, auditorium but uh, after my presentations I I get a lot of contacts and um, personal questions and uh, I have now relations uh, with uh, a lot of uh, professionals who are interested in that. It's great. And uh, Indra, could you tell us shortly what are the main qualities pilots should have to be successful? Of course, I'm always talking about it depends on the company, it uh, depends on the work, it depends on the personality, but uh, there are a huge list of uh, personality skills uh, and of course uh, there's not only about personality, the knowledge is uh, also very important, but uh, the main thing that uh, the person should fit that position. It couldn't be like there is a desire or there are professional interest or uh, thinking style fits to that. Everything should be in a one list and job fit, fit is the most important. important. Indra, you work at Flight Training Organization at Baltic Aviation Academy and you see ab initio students at the beginning and at the end of the learning process. What do they know, uh, features, qualities, develop or acquire during their studies? As I was uh, talking before, the main thing uh, to find out the uh, skills, knowledge and personality features uh, before they become a student. So I could say that the main uh, goal for the training uh, organization for us, for instructors, uh, everything is about knowledge and skills. But of course, uh, these young guys, when they are coming uh, to our academy, they, most of them are about 19, 18, 20. So uh, they become more independent and uh, they are reaching their goals and their dreams. And of course, they, they change uh, their living style. But it's different, difficult to, to find out what they have changed. Uh, maybe their appearance, friends could say, but of course the main thing, they become more and more independent. That's, that's very, very important. And for the ending, Indra, do you imagine yourself as a pilot? Uh, I know what pilot job is and uh, I see a lot of my colleagues, uh, they believe what they are doing, but that's not my way. Thank you and good luck in spreading your word in the conferences. Thank you.